No, take it away. How's everybody doing? So um, I was probably one of the rarest times that you're actually going to see a black person talking about something in significant length of, with about Russia, but here we are. So um, <laughs> basically, uh, I want to talk about the fact that there's a great opportunity to talk about race, particularly how white supremacy can operate globally outside of the American construct and how Russia participates in that. And so it's something that the media generally uh, writ large, I think is a very understudied topic. I mean, we talk about race, we understand that Russia used racial strife within America, but we don't necessarily indict it and understand why people fall for it. And so um, there are a lot of people who believe, uh, there are a lot, there's a lot of debate of whether or not hacking actually took place. I personally believe it. And that social media definitely was a key vehicle through which to promote um, you know, racially charged um, sentiments among American people. And most particularly, um, the people who actually experienced Russian hacking before, it was actually Estonia, Ukraine, and uh, name any number of European countries. And so one of the first things you wonder is that, you know, um, you think about Estonians, for example, they look kind of quote unquote white, right? But you know, being a black person from growing up, growing up in the inner city of Detroit, um, I'm going over and looking at all these people, one of the first things I know is that, you know, like there are actually white people around the world who actually can't stand each other, right? And so if you look at um, Estonia, I mean, it's actually true. So you look at Estonia, for example, what first fake news story that came out in 2007 was that the Estonian government was going to take down, you know, like the uh, gold bronze statue was a Soviet statue, um, basically uh, end up being a fake news story. And, um, but the thing is the damage was done, you know, like finally uh, protests took place among the Russian minorities. Uh, the second story took place, fake news uh, came out in, you know, sorry, hacking was in 2008 when the uh, Georgian Russia war took place. And I was actually there studying Georgian language. And one of the first hacking attempts was to juxtapose photos of the pre then president Mikhail Saakashvili uh, with Hitler. And so that was really designed to, uh, to gen up ethnic strife between Georgia and this ethnic minorities, um, including uh, South Ossetians and Abkhazians. If you want to understand what those groups of people are, let me know afterwards. But basically, uh, I think one of the main reasons why Russia has been so effective with hacking and exploiting racial strife here is that they actually have their own history of being a supremacist state. Just as we have white supremacy here, there's also a supremacist ideology that's taken place through the, um, you know, the Russian Tsar's period to the Soviet Union. Um, and right now, some of the main elements of some of the main conversations about hacking, uh, Clinton Watts is one of the foremost, lead, uh, foremost uh, experts in hacking. He specifically talked about how Russia used race in order to manipulate uh, Americans here. And then also what's important to note is that fake news is not just a Russian phenomenon, it's actually used here. One of the most known fake stories took place uh, during the uh, rise in Atlanta, Georgia in 1906. So what I do at the root is that I actually make this make my knowledge of Russia, make my knowledge of uh, Russian imperialism accessible to black audiences in particular. And I think one of the main problems is that there's not a democratization of how this information is disseminated. And so you're used to seeing, quite frankly, old you know, white men having this debate. And I think that lived experiences really inform how we disseminate news, how we're able to um, explain what it means to a wide range of people. And so, um, I, and I think one of the main things that's missing in the conversation is that yes, while Russia did evoke racial animus among its, uh, amongst uh, the American population, it really did not create the problems, right? So it, Russia did not, in, did not make 53% of white people vote against their um, gender, right? Uh, it didn't make uh, white people vote over their economic interests. And so I think that there is a, a power in really taking on uh, taking on the power of how media can indict its own issues of racism as opposed to just simply saying, well, we have a race problem. Now, and I go to Ukraine every three months and there's an organization that's called Stop Fake News. And what they specifically do is that they do nothing but post fake news and explain why it's fake, right? Um, so this is taking place in Ukraine and that's another topic you can ask me about and I'm going to actually have a session tomorrow that deals particularly with what some of the lessons that we can learn from Ukraine. But um, at any rate, that's just a uh, touch of what I do. But if you want to learn more about it, just follow me on Twitter. Then follow me, um, ask me questions about this after um, you know, we're done. But thank you very much.